Hi and welcome to another video. This time let's have a look into Add to Siri button on iOS. On the right side of the screen here you can see this Add to Siri button running on the simulator. If I tap it there is this pop-up showing up and then we can also remove a shortcut down here. Now you can see that the state of this button changed to Add it to Siri and there is a title below it. If we tap it again we can use this option below in Polish right now to remove a shortcut and there we go, the button came back to the previous state, it says Add to Siri again. I've decided to cover this topic because I've noticed there is no flutter package for it and it took a little bit of time to figure out what to do on iOS for a non-iOS developer. So there are two ways that you could implement this button. The first option is to have everything implemented on the Dart side, so, or at least the whole UI, so you would have this button and its states implemented on the Dart side. The other way which I went for is to have a platform view and use the native already prepared for you by Apple button that you can just plug in into your platform view and display it on a device within the Flutter application. Of course, the problem with this solution is that it's slightly less performant than the previous solution where all the UI is done in Dart. The advantage of this solution is that we already reused what's there on the iOS platform and we also don't have to implement all the method channels and events to communicate between Swift and Dart. Alright, with that said, let's look into the implementation of this feature. First of all, on the Dart site over here, we have this Add to Siri page that I've added. It's just a very simple application, a project in Dart that has nothing more than just a bootstrap widget and then we have this page which is kind of a page which is a stateless widget. Inside over here we can see two things. First of all we have this view tape and this is important because this string over here is kind of a glue between Swift and Dart so that the two platforms know how to communicate with each other. Then we have a list of parameters that we want to pass to Swift from Dart so in my case this is a title for the shortcut and also a link that this shortcut will be registered with. Then I have a scaffold, inside I have some size box to just limit the height of this button or, or of this platform view widget and then I'm using the iOS platform view widget which is the UI kit view and here we are passing the view type and then we specify that we want to go from left to right and then I'm passing also the parameters defined and also some standard codec. That's basically a very basic setup for the iOS platform view and if you are interested more about how to do it just go to the Flutter's documentation on the platform views. Both for iOS and Android it's very similar, but if you would have something that also uses Android then you would have to have a different widget used here. With that said, let's go to the Swift site. And before we start just please note that I'm not an iOS developer and if this code is not perfect then feel free to comment. Also if you would like me to see writing in future maybe more of this crappy Swift code then just subscribe to my channel, I'm sure I will not disappoint you. Now, let's get to the code. First of all, in the app delegate over here, we have to add a couple of lines of code. Firstly, we have this registrar over here, and it has some name, it doesn't matter what the name is, just the name has to be much tighter over here. So we have this registrar with this register for plugin and the name, and then we are creating some factory. So this factory is something we also have to implement, and this is also how any platform view would be implemented if you check the documentation. This platform gets some messenger from the register, so then it can communicate with the Dart code, and then we also have to register it for the plugin with that name that we specified over here, so that's the same name. After what, we use this register function and we pass the factory that we've created over here, and finally we also use this with ID, and notice this is the same string that we used on Dart. So again, this is the glue between the two sides. The next piece of the puzzle is this Siri shortcut native view factory. So let's have a look into it. I've defined a file over here on the Swift site that is called Flutter Siri Shortcuts. It could be a better name, but that's my name. And then inside over here we have this factory defined. So it's basically a class that is um, extending this Flutter platform view factory. So we have to do it, we have to use this factory in order to use platform views on iOS over here so we can attach some view. It gets this messenger here in the init and there's nothing more really happening in the init. So then we have the create method and because it's a factory so the factory is creating something. And in our case this factory is creating an instance of this Siri shortcut native view that I have defined over here which is a Flutter platform view. You may notice that we pass a couple of parameters to it so there is this frame over here which is coming from this create method. Just be careful because if you want to use this frame, at this point this will not work, it will actually hold only 0, 0 as width and height. Then we also pass to it the uh, view ID and the arguments, and the arguments are very important because that's where we get information from Dart. So the next step is this Siri shortcut native view defined over here, and this has just one field which is this Siri shortcuts view. And the Siri shortcuts view is finally the button that you can see over here. So it's a view that I've created that is holding this button. 
So all this view for is doing here for me is it just creates this Siri shortcut view and you don't have to create an extra class for it, but for the clarity of the code, I'm having an extra class, which is a type of a type UI view and it holds a button. But you could also host this button that is defined in this class just directly in this class and it would also work. The important thing is though to return this view, whether it's a button or anything else that you're having, from this method over here. So then, in the Siri shortcut view, which is the final view that holds the button that the Siri has over here, we do a couple of things. So first of all, we have an init function, and this is where all the magic is happening, or most of the magic. First of all, we take the arguments. This is probably a little bit ugly that I'm just assuming that the arguments are there, but that's what I'm doing for simplicity of this example. And then I'm creating the button over here. And one parameter that you can add to this button is this style. So in my case, I'm using the white outline style. But in case you want to support the dark mode, then you would have to have some if else condition over here in case of a platform uh, brightness being dark, then to display a different style. And here you can see that I am using this INUI add voice shortcut button. And this is coming from the iOS framework. It's specified in the documentation over here, you can have a look. But basically all the state and the button, how it looks like, it's implemented in this component. Now, if we look down here, we have to specify something called an activity, an as user activity over here. We can give it some type. I gave it a type of a shortcut. Of course, you can give it something else. This is something that I just made up. Then we can give it an URL and I'm taking it from the arguments as a link. And again, I'm just assuming it is there over here. And then when the shortcut is registered to Siri and you will use Siri, to open something, then this is the link that will be opened. And then whether you are using deep linking for your application or not, it will open either your application or a website. And then we also give it a title, which is again coming from the arguments from Dart. Then I'm assigning this title also to the phrase. So we can set the suggested invocation phrase. And this is the title again for me. And finally, we have the shortcut defined over here, which is of a type I and shortcut. And we pass this activity to this class. And then finally, in the button, we have this dot shortcut and this is where we, the shortcut is actually set. So button dot shortcut is holding an instance of this in shortcut and this is holding an instance of an activity or a user activity. One more important thing in this constructor over here is this delegate over here. So I am setting it to self and if you scroll down over here you can see I've defined this extension on the same type over here, Siri shortcut view, that is implementing this delegate over here. And this delegate is coming with these two present methods. And this is very important because if we don't do it and we don't set the delegate over here to the button, then clicking on the button at the C will do nothing. This is because this button is not defining what it should do when it's actually clicked on. So it's just a button, it, this component is providing the UI, nothing more. And finally over here we are defining that when this present method is um, invoked, so when the button was clicked, then we want to get the root controller over here. And this is a root controller because the platform view doesn't have its own view controller. So that's why I added this function copied from somewhere that is basically finding a root controller, view controller on iOS and then calling present on it. So we are calling the present over here. And this is finally how this pop-up, if we click on the button, is showing. And then finally, if we are back to this method over here, you can see that we also have to add our button to, as a sub view to this view in which this is defined. And then one more important thing down here. So here we have this method layout sub views. And this is finally where we can access the actual size. So if you would like to constrain, like I am constraining over here, the button to be in the middle of the view, like you can see over here in my screen, or if you would like to access the frame, the width and height of the platform view that will be displayed, then you have to do it in this layout subviews method. If you get the frame here, then you will get the actual width and height and not in the frame that is passed somewhere over here in the constructor of Siri shortcut native view. And then finally, there is one more piece of puzzle because if we tap on this button over here and there is this pop-up, then there are a couple of actions like there is OK, there is the delete shortcut over here, there is edit shortcuts up here, and there is also change the phrase button over here. And if you tap any of these buttons, but you don't have another delegate set over here, then something could happen, but not everything that we want. So what would happen be the action that the button actually is doing could happen. So this pop-up is implementing, for example, deleting the shortcut or changing the name. 
But what it's not implementing is for example dismissing itself when we click on OK or anything else. And you can see that right now if I tap OK on this pop-up, then this pop-up or dialog is disappearing. And this is implemented also on our side, so we are hooking into these buttons with a delegate. And you can see in this present methods over here, we have this delegate set to self. And again, this delegate is of another type for which we have another extension here in Swift, which is this INUI add voice shortcut view controller delegate, or the name. And also here is another one for edit. Um, so we have these two delegates for two different actions as well. And this is giving us access to callbacks when these buttons are pressed. So for example, if I'm pressing OK over here, then one of these callbacks is being triggered. And you can see I've just copied this code from somewhere again. On each of these actions, then I'm just dismissing this pop-up. So whatever we will try to do, then finally the pop-up gets dismissed. There we go. I hope this video helped you in a way to implement the button, or at least you learned something how to do this in Flutter, or maybe how to work with platform views. If so, please like this video, leave a comment if you would like to ask a question or endorse this video, and also subscribe to my channel for more content like this. But for now, I call you the devil and I see you the next time. Bye bye.